I put out a call on my Facebook channel today uh, for ideas on companies that we could use so that we could look into a bit more detail substantive testing and designing substantive tests. So I had a request for a whole lot more examples. So thanks to one of my students, Tim, he suggested we look at the athlete's foot. So the athlete's foot is similar to Foot Locker uh, and a number of other footwear retailers. So they certainly sell running shoes. I'm going to use the athlete's foot to do some examples today on some substantive tests. So let's start with something really basic, like how we would test sales. So if I think about sales, I know that I need to think about my transaction assertions. So I'm going to start by listing those assertions first. So according to ASA 315, paragraph A124, our assertions relating to sales will be occurrence, making sure the sales are all really real, accuracy, Sales recorded at the correct amount. Completeness, all sales are recorded. Classification, all of our sales are recorded as uh, the correct revenue items. And cutoff, transactions are recorded in the correct financial period. So let's get into looking at how we can describe, write a procedure for each of these. And I'm doing this using my list of nine procedures. So I'll write these at the bottom here. So I've got all of my procedures. I've got vouching, tracing, recalculating, analytical procedures, inspecting documents and assets, inquiries, confirmation, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three, performance, oops, that one doesn't quite fit in there, and computer assisted audit techniques. All right, so with occurrence, I know that occurrence is always going to be a vouching procedure. So I've got four rules for designing my substantive tests. Number one, make sure that uh, you're using the correct terminology. Number two, make sure you use the right client information or names for documentation. Number three, be specific so that somebody can follow what you're doing. And number four, make sure that you match it up to the correct substantive procedure. So occurrence is usually a vouching test. I'm going to start by saying, okay, we're going to vouch. Now, I don't really know too much about the athlete's foot uh, internal policies and procedures, but I'm going to make some general ideas here. So I'm going to vouch sales journal entries because we always start at the end. Journal entries. And I've got to vouch it back to something else. And it's not sufficient to simply say supporting documentation. So if uh, I'm looking at my sales journal entries, I want to vouch them back to maybe a copy of the sales receipt. So the retail organization, all right? So there'd be some form of sales receipt. There's not going to be any delivery documentation. Uh, so I want to look at the sales receipt or potentially even a credit card or EFT slip. Alright, so the, the cash register would have its own receipt and then perhaps proof of a credit card or electronic funds transfer. So I can't go back to orders or anything like that because customers don't make orders, but sales journal entries back to that cash receipt um, because there's no deliveries. So we can't look at any shipping documentation. Let's look at accuracy. Now I could use that same sample there but I will need to recalculate a sample of sales 
of, of sales, reconciling prices from the receipt. Oh, now that's going into receipt to some sort of master price list. Because I'm going to assume here that there is some sort of barcode scanning system. So you scan a barcode of a shoe, it gives you the price. All right. So reconciling prices from receipt to the master price list. Now let's look at completeness. Completeness is going to be using our uh, tracing assertion, uh, sorry, our tracing procedure there. So I want to trace a sample of sales from cash register records to the journal entries. Now classification is going to be about the correct debits and credits. So there, what I'm going to do is Select a sample of journal entries. And here, to make sure they are going to the right debit and credit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to match those journal entries. I'm going to check the account used are correct based on the company's chart of accounts on the athlete sports chart of accounts. So a chart of accounts is a list of all the account codes used within the software. So an MYOB, for example, all assets start with 100, uh, all liabilities start with 200. So we need to make sure that we're debiting the correct cash or credit card account uh, code and the correct revenue code. And then same for the inventory. Uh, because remember the journal entries are going to be debit, cash, credit, sales, or revenue. And then also at the same time, we're going to have debit, cost of goods sold, credit, our inventory. All right, so I need to think about both of those. Now with my cutoff, cutoff is about making sure that the transactions around the end of the financial year are all recorded in the correct period. There shouldn't be too much of a problem here because when we sell a good, we send it to the customer on the same day. But we're going to probably block, select sales two days prior and after the end of the financial year. Ensure goods were taken by customers by the year end. Now that's not likely to be a big problem. Where this is likely to come into some issue is with things like laybys, where you might have some goods received uh, or partially paid for, uh, and those can't be recognised as revenue. They need to be unearned revenue. So as you can see here, what we've done is I've gone through each of the assertions relating to sales and I've used my procedures to calculate um, some approximate, uh, to determine some substantive tests that we can use. Now remember, I can use more of these. I've, I've just got some here. Um, if I was also worried about occurrence, another test I could do would be to compare inventory movement to sales records. All right, and that would be using my basic uh, management accounting information. So opening inventory plus inventory purchase, um, next inventory sold gives me closing inventory. So if I've got the opening, the purchases and the closing, then I can actually work backwards to figure out what the sales amount should be in terms of inventory. And then I can actually 
compare that to what we see in our revenue account. So there's our summary for sales, auditing sales substantively at the athlete's foot. Uh, keep an eye out for more videos using the athlete where we might look at purchases and inventory.